This video is a chance for you to go over the pro practice problems that you did to prepare for your test on the Unit 1 exam. In the first three questions, we're going to use this figure to name the following. Let's start with number one. We're supposed to name the line that contains the points Q and Z. So in our picture, the line that contains points Q and Z is this line here. And we can name it line QZ. We can name it line QY, since Y is also on it. Even YZ or line B. There are different ways to do that. I'm going to just go ahead and call that line B. Four different ways, but we'll just use line B as our answer. Number two. We're asked to name two points that are coplanar with points W, X, and Y. So they need to lie in the same plane. W, X, and Y are all in the green plane P. We need two more points that are also in that plane. Looks like W, X, and Y are joined by point Q and by point Z. So point Q and point Z. Be careful, it would be wrong to say point P or point C or B. Those are naming the lines in the plane. And number three, the intersection of lines A and B. What do the lines A and B share? Two lines we learned always intersect in a point when they intersect. One point is what we're looking for. Here's line A running vertical through the plane. Line A and line B, what point is on both of those lines? The point where they cross, which is point Q. Now questions four and five, we are asked to find the value of the variable if point P is between points J and K. This is another one where we're going to have to draw a diagram. Being point J and point K are the endpoints of a segment and point P lies, lies somewhere between them. For the information we're given in number four, the distance from J to P is 2x, let's add that to our diagram. The distance from P to K is 7x also in the diagram, and then we have a full distance of the entire length from J all the way to K given to us as 27. So our job is to find that value of the variable. We're going to add these two pieces together, the 2x plus the 7x, those two smaller parts combine to make the full length of 27. Solving for x, we get 9x total on the left equals to 27, and then dividing both sides by 3, or excuse me, dividing both sides by 9, we get our answer is 3. So the value of x is 3. In number 5, we're going to draw a similar picture. So let's go ahead and resketch our picture. Again, point P is between J and K. And so J and K are on the ends, and point P is somewhere in between. We are going to have JP reading in our information. JP's distance is 3y plus 1. And P to K is 12y minus 4. Came out messy. And then all the way from J to K, that again is the full length. That full length across is given to us as 75 units. So like we did in number four, we're going to add the two parts together and let it equal the full length of 75. Piece number one was 3y plus 1. Let's add that to the second part, 2y minus 4. And grand total of all of those, the full length is 75. And the algebra begins. First things is to collect the like terms on the left. We have 3y added with 12y for a total of 15y. And going on there, 1 minus 4 gives me a negative number, negative 3. And everything else is going to come down. Then as I start trying to isolate the variable, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of our negative 3 on this side by adding a 3 to both sides. And so now I get to cancel, and now I've got just 15y on the left. We're on the right, I'm up to 78 now. And on that then, I'm going to divide by 15. Both sides divided by 15. Let's pull a calculator out for that division. And we've got 78 divided by 15 for a total of 5.2. The value of y would be 5.2. 5.2. And now question six. Same picture one more time. We have point P lying between points J 
and K. So let's put J and K one more time on the ends. Point P between them. And then reading from our information from J to P, it's 8Z minus 17. And P to K is 5Z minus 37, or 5Z plus 37. And finally, our full length is given from J to K all the way across. The whole length is another expression, 17Z minus 4. So this one looks like it's going to be a little more challenging in the algebra. Let's set it up, though, the same way. JP is the first piece. Add that to PK. So we're going to add these two pieces together. 8Z minus 17. Add that to 5Z plus 37. And then our total is the full length, which is given as another expression, is 17Z minus 4. And let the algebra begin. First things, collect those like terms. How many is 8z added with 5z? That's going to be 13z. And then we have a negative 17, and we're going to join that and add it with 37. Positive 20. There's no like terms to collect here, so we'll just bring this down on the other side. And now, let's bring the z's all to one side. Most of them are already here with the 17z, so let's just take those 13z's off of the left by subtraction and do the same to the other side. That gives us a cancel opportunity. How many z's have we got? 17 minus 13z's gives me just 4z's. 4z. And then let's take care of the number. This negative 4 on the z side, let's go ahead and add that 4 so that we can cancel it and bring it over to the other side. That gives me then just 24 on the, right, on the left, and they've canceled on the right. So finally, let's reduce our 4z's down to just 1z by division. Dividing by 4, we have a final answer of z, which is equal to 24 divided by 4 is 6. Question 13 is one that seems to be challenging for a lot of students. Let's talk it through. We've got a word problem. Let's read through it first. The measure of angle x is 18 more than 3 times the measure of its complement. Find the measure of angle x. So let's read that or draw a picture of that, but let's draw it so that we do have that complementary relationship between angle x and the other angle. So that means we've got one angle named x. We have no idea how big it is, but it must be a complement, meaning it's got to add to 90 degrees, a complement to another angle. And let's just call that other angle angle y. So what we're saying is that angle x, its measure added to angle y, has to equal 90 degrees. And so that they're complements. But we don't know anything about either angle. Let's go back and read again. The measure of angle x is 18 more than three times the measure of its complement. So they tell us a lot about angle x, but nothing about angle y. So I'm going to put just a little variable in here. I'm going to call this little variable a. And let that be the measure of angle y. How many degrees is angle y? No idea. But once I've done that, then I can go and talk about angle x in terms of that. So it says it's 18 more than three times the measure of this a. That means I have to triple the a value and then add, thir add 18 to that. So again, I'm going to take three times angle A, and add 18. So let's read it one more time and make sure that makes sense. It says the measure of angle X here is 18 more than three times the measure of its complement, which was A. So I think that works. So now we just have to plug these into our equation. So angle X is our 3A plus 18, and that gets added to angle Y, which is just also unknown, but A and a grand total of 90. Let's do the algebra. If I combine my like terms, I'm looking at 4a plus 18. As we bring that down, that equals our 90 degree total. Now, subtracting an 18 off from each side allows me to cancel here. So I have just 4a, and it comes down to 72. And then finally, I'm going to divide by 4 to get the A all alone. So A is alone, and it would be 
72 divided by 4, or 18. Now, let's plug this back in. We have to find the value of the measure of angle x, so we need to substitute that back in. So let me come back up to my diagram. I'm going to take 3 times the 18 value, and then I add 18. Let's pull a calculator out on this one. So 3 times 18 plus 18. That's a grand total of 72. So angle x is 72 degrees. Let's check this and make sure that this works. What's angle y? The value of angle y is the a we found. So angle y would be 18 degrees. And do they add to 90 so they're truly complements? 72 plus 18 is 90 degrees, so that works. So the value of angle x is 72 degrees for our answer. Let's tackle question 14. In question 14, we are asked to find a value of x that will make these two lines perpendicular. Remember, the definition of perpendicular is that we have that right angle relationship, or in other words, they make a 90 degree total. So we have two expressions given. You probably want to draw this picture. 3x plus 4 for our smaller angle, and then 4x plus 2 for our larger angle. With the goal of these lines being perpendicular, I need to make sure that this rotation is 90 degrees total. So I'm going to have to add the two pieces together. And that's how I set up my equation. My first angle, 3x plus 4, that's going to get added to my second angle of 4x plus 2 to make a grand total of our 90 degrees for the perpendicular relationship. Now let's do the algebra. Adding those x terms together, we have 3x plus 4x making 7x. And then our 4 and our 2, the constants combined to make the 6 equals 90. Looks like in this case I'm going to subtract 6 off each side, letting me cancel here. So I've now got 7x equals to 84. When I reduce that down to make it just say 1x dividing by 7, the value of x would have to be 12. In this next set of questions, our figure has a lot of angles numbered, and we're going to use that to name some parts. So question 15, name the vertex of angle 3. Angle 3 here has these two sides. Where is it making its bend? That's point C. In 16, what are the sides of angle 1? What rays make angle 1? Angle 1 is here, and it looks like it has a vertex of G. So both rays are going to start with G as their endpoint. One ray comes out through H, and one ray comes out through C or B. So I would say that these would be ray starting G through, through C, if I'm doing this one. You also could say B. So ray G, C, and the second ray making the sides of angle 1 are ray, is ray G, H. Make sure you're starting at G. Number 17 is to write another name for angle 6. So I got too many angles with that vertex. I can't just call it angle F. I'm going to have to name it by the dot to dot method. So let's start here and go through E, make our bend at F, and then pass through C. So I would call this angle E, F, C. You notice that the vertex is right there in the middle. That's angle, or vertex is F. And last, number 18, we have to name a pair of angles that share exactly one point. So some things that we need to be careful of is if I have an angle and I only want it to share one point, then that means that it's probably going to be the vertex point, and I cannot share a side. I don't want adjacent angles. I need angles that do something like this, maybe like vertical angles, or for example. They only share that vertex. So let's see if we can find something like that in our picture. In our picture, I see a bunch of stuff happening right here at this vertex C, so we might say angle A, C, G, or let's call it that angle 7. Angle 7 does not share a whole lot with angle 4 way over here, but they do share one point, which is C. So I think I'm going to pick that for my answer. So I've got angle 7 and angle 4. Now there are more than that, there are more possible answers, of course, but that's one. Just be certain that you're not sharing any other points but just the one point they ask for. 
In question 19, it's a multiple choice question, and we're asked to determine which of the following statements is true. Notice there's an all of the above, so we're going to have to be careful to check each statement. We're also given that angle 1 and angle 2 are equal to each other in their measures. So in other words, they're congruent. Let's mark that now in the picture. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. What else might be true? In A, we find that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Does that have to be true? Does angle 2 have to match angle 4? What do you remember we talked about in class about the vertical angles? Angles 2 and 4 are vertical angles, and so therefore they are congruent. So I can add that. I'm going to tick mark it just to match angle 2, which happens to also match angle 1. So A is a true statement. Let's check out B. Is angle 2 a right angle? Does angle 2 have to make 90 degrees? Well, if we notice again that 1 and 2 are together making a linear pair, in other words, there's 180 degrees total there, and they're equal, so I could divide them both by 2, then 90 degrees is the measure of angle 1 and angle 2. So this is a yes. That's true also. And let's go ahead and mark them as perpendicular with our square angle. In C, we're asked if line L is perpendicular to line M. Remember this symbol here for perpendicular. Do they make 90 degree angles, these two lines? Absolutely, we just found that in part C. And so therefore, which of the following statements is true? All of the above. D is our answer. In question 21, we have to determine the perimeter of the polygon, the rectangle PQRS, and then they give us the vertices as ordered pairs. So let's go ahead and draw a graph so we can take a look at what that is. If we start with point P at 0, 0, that's the origin. Let's put that here. And then reading on, we've got point Q at 0, 7, so 0 for X, but all the way up to 7 on Y. We find point Q. And then point R is at 12, 7, 12 on our X and 7 on our Y. And finally, point S is at 12, 0. So that's just 12 over on the X, but nowhere on the Y. And this is our rectangle. We get to find the perimeter of this rectangle. And I believe it is a rectangle. Everything's vertical and horizontal. So how long is each side? And then we'll just add them up. From Q to R, we can start there. It goes out from the 0 to the 12. So this is just 12 units long. And since it's a rectangle, it's going to be 12 units long on the bottom. The distance up to the top here is just 7 units long from P to Q. And so we have a match here. And then let's just add up these numbers to get the perimeter. It's just going to be 7 plus the 12. And we could just double that, or we could just write it all out. 7 more plus 12. All four sides added up together makes a grand total of 38 units. And you're done.